Hello and welcome. We are doing Minerva Mon Loop BT10 deck profile. Not only do I think that this deck is tier 1 and is capable of beating everything in the format, this current variant is also undefeated. That's right, chat. I have played 11 matches against 11 different decks, including Cross, Blue, Fair, Reaper, Black, or Grey. No issues. Couple games, couple games here and there, that's fine. But this is 11 for 11, this list. Uh, and I'm very pleased because once you get to a certain point in this deck, which we'll talk about when we get there, the deck is unbeatable. And there's lots of fail safes as well. Also, chat's telling me that it's pronounced My Nervamon. So if you think it's pronounced My Nervamon, let me know. Anyway. Deck profile, so like the video, comment, let me know what you think, subscribe to the notification bell to smash potatoes, that way you know when all these amazing Digimon videos go live. And we'll start with the eggs like we usually do. Just got four Demi Maras, you don't need anything else. Uh, on deletion, draw one, discard one. That's It's fine. It's pretty good. We play cards to abuse that, obviously. I'm sure you guys know what they are right now. Play four of them. Rookies. Ten rookies. Ten rookies. I'll explain why it's fine that we play ten rookies. We play four Gabamon on Deletion Inheritable, draw two, discard one. It's broken. We're playing only three copies of Psychmon. We are also playing three copies of Gazimon. The reason I'm doing three Psychmon in particular is because it is recyclable, because we do play Calling by the Grave, and we also play ways to get them back. It is very good against certain Tier 1 decks of the format, absolutely, but Gazimon is also really good against certain Tier 1 decks of the format. And I wanted a nice even split, and there was no room for more rookies. So we are playing 10. Keep in mind that any purple card in this deck basically is recyclable and reusable. So you don't have to go 4-4-4. Four, 4-3-3 four, four. Four, three, three is more than enough. And that's it for the rookies. Going into the champions, we're starting off with 4 Eyes Mon Scatter Mode. We can kind of get away with playing 10 rookies because of this. There are plenty of hands where I opened either like a rookie or eyes on scatter mode or both in some cases. Um, and turn one dropping scatter mode is fine against most decks. It's pretty good. And on deletion, graceful charity. Nothing wrong with non deletion, graceful charity. We're playing the one copy of Eismon, the one that is at limited to one. Discard it while you have an Eismon, Skyrimon, and Graveyard. Bring it back for free. Pretty busted. We're playing one copy of Genkaku Promote because you can bring it back and rush for game. You, there's going to be a lot of rushing in this deck. Your end turn is fold, filled with rush attacks. And Genkaku Promote is just one extra way you can get there. And it's recyclable like everything else. So we play one of that. And then we're playing three blockers. Two, Vi Devi two Devimon and a Vilemon. Um, I'm okay with this lineup, TBH. Uh, it's nice having the one cost to evolve blocker, and it's nice to have Vilemon sometimes, because it costs five, which actually mattered sometimes. And um, having the blockers is fine because of the big boss monster Minervamon, or Minervamon, that we will talk about soon. Then that's it for the champions. So there's only nine champions. The Digimon lineup is pretty tight. But there is a lot of deck thinning and a lot of draw power in the deck, so it's okay to be a little tight. Who like who doesn't like a little bit tight though, right chat? Right? A little tight? Smile? The ultimate lineup is very straightforward. We're playing four copies of Cerberus Mon on deletion, draw two, discard one. And we're playing three copies of Cerberus Mon Werewolf Mode. It has Rush. And when you play this card, you can delete a Cerberus Mon and gain nine memory. Which is really cool. Um, so usually the, the the most common play is you like evolve service mon or whatever. Then you play this for nine and you pop this and gain nine. It's basically a net even memory investment. And the one copy of Chimera Mon. I don't know if I'm sold on Chimera Mon yet or not. It seems a little bit weird, champ, if you ask me. Uh, for those who don't remember what this card does, it's an on-play, pop one of your own to pop a level 5 or lower Digimon on your opponent's side of the field. So it does pop a lot of annoying things like memory blockers um, and blockers. Blo blockers are annoying too, by the way. So Chimera Mon pops those for you, and it's level 5, so it's kind of abusable. Uh, kind of abusable 
is fine. All right, ultimates are done. Megas, we're playing three of this proxy card. This proxy card is Minervamon. Uh, I forgot to cut out the proxies and put the proxies over the the cards. <laughs> anyway, so Minervamon is 11,000 DP, uh, three costs to evolve on a purple. It has retaliation, which is fine. It um, has two really cool effects. It has an opponent's turn effect. When they play a Digimon, you can play a level 4 or lower purple. The on play doesn't activate, which doesn't really matter too much. But it does play like a blocker, which is really important. Or like an eyes on scatter mode for you to kill it later and draw more cards. So that effect's kind of cool. And it does do really fun things against Mastamon, which is kind of hilarious. And then is the main effect. The main number one reason why this deck is insane. This blue card here if if you if, if if it dies and your opponent has two digimon or less on the field you get to bring back a level five purple digimon from your trash and the on play is not negated we're gonna get to the combo in a bit we gotta go through the rest of the cards first we are playing two copies of lilithmon uh, it is kind of a loopy deck still, and we are still doing Lilith loop-like shenanigans, sort of. So Lilithmon being able to recur options for you, to give yourself even more memory to work with, does come up sometimes. But it's not the main focus of the deck by any stretch of the imagination. We're also not playing win rate for any any crazy contraptions, so we're only playing two. What I am playing, though, one of my favorite Digimon combos since Peanut Butter and Jelly... The one Junomon and the one Avenge Kidmon. I'm still in love with this package. This is a really nice looking package. The reason that Avenge Kidmon is in the deck is because there are people that I test with that like to play for Holy Flame and for Breath of the Gods. Granted, that's all my fault. I'll take full responsibility for that. But sometimes you'll be going through your motions, right? You will have no deck left. If you hit a Holy Flame, or a Breath of the Gods, and you have no deck, you're fucked, right? Well, wrong. If you play the one copy of Avenge Kinmon, then the end of your turn can just be putting your options back in your deck, and that's it. And then you don't deck out, and because you have so much board advantage on the field, because that's what purple does while it's going off this deck, um, that's it. It's really good. And also does pop something, and it, we all know what Avenge Kinmon does. It's there to prevent the deck out. That's it. And if it happens twice, or if Avenge Kidmon ends up in security or something like that, or you have to discard it early on because the rest of the cards in your hand are broken, Junomon is there to help you get it back. Uh, because it's the only way to uh, get Avenge Kidmon back in the deck. from To your hand. Uh, Junomon has retaliation, but you evolve it, you mill three return Digimon cards from trash to hand. There was a match, a singular match against Yellow Hybrid, where the guy had two Holy Flames in security. So what I had to do was do the Cerberus Mon combo, whatever. Get the, do the combo. Hit a Holy Flame. So I Avenged Kidmon, so I didn't deck out. Next turn, did, continued on. And uh, did my thing. No deck again. But again, Holy Flame in security. So what I did is I used a Con from the Darkness to pop the Avenged Kidmon. Evolve the Juno Mon to bring back the Avenged Kidmon. Or cycle the options again. So I didn't deck out again and then i won that game and uh that's the power of the combo um old lilithoop was really cool because of mega digimon fusion it gave you a like safeguard to not decking out because it put the zort defeat on the, the start the zort on the bottom of the deck and avenge kidmon kind of gives you the same theory you can kind of play as recklessly as you want as you need to uh without the fear of decking out because avenge kidmon does save you i think it's incredibly important um so for sixes we do play the one copy of Omnimon Swart because bringing back Cerberus Mons is really cool. And returning a level 6 to your hand when you attack with it is really cool. Uh, and that's as simple as that. And we play the one copy of Death X Mon, the final Dodge Mon deck. We only need one because it's purple, which means it's recyclable. Um, but it is really good, this format. BT10, really good. Really good. Really good. Um, and that's it. Simple as that. It's, it, it, it's cheap, it kills things, and it puts constant pressure on your opponent. Uh, we only need one because we can recycle it, and it's fine. Perfect, perfect 
and perfect. That's it for the Digimon lineup. The deck is pretty good. And we'll go on the Tamers next before we get into any super duper combos here. We're playing two copies of Analog Youth on Play Mill th Reveal Top 3. Add Digimon to your hand, know the rest, and then all turns, one of your level 5 or higher stack Digimon die, suspend the game memory and hatch. You gain a lot of memory with this card, and it gives, helps you fix brick hands sometimes, which is really cool. And we play one copy of Matt Ishida, because I do want a memory tamer in my deck. Because you can get choked, and if you get choked, but you don't have like Jack Rager stuff to do your turns, uh, it is kind of awkward. Uh, but Matt Ishida is there to help you with that. The only matchup it's really bad against is like Black War Greymon. But everything else, it's fine. It's fine. And sure, you have the extra Tamer on board, so Death X is a little more viable against you. But Death X Mon only pops level 4 lowers. And it's really, really easy to build a board of level 5 and higher's. So, that's pretty alright. Um, that's it for Tamers. On to options. The main option in the deck is not Jack Raid. No, friends. It is four copies of this random, obscure BT5 Uncommon, Revive from the Darkness. I will read this card to you because it's really good. So, it has an effect that you delete one of your purple Digimon, and then you can play level 5 or lower Digimon from your trash. The on play doesn't activate with this card. So, it costs 4 to play. Keep that in mind. Just, just keep that in mind, okay? Let's say that you have Minerva Mon on the field. You have these cards in the graveyard, or even one card underneath it'll go to the graveyard, whatever. Okay. So you activate, and, and we'll use, let's say I have, do I have a dice? Something here. Let's say I have zero memory. Let's just say. All right. So I activate the Revive from the Darkness. Revive from the Darkness for four. I pop the Minerva Mon. It is dead. I continue to resolve Revive from the Darkness, so I bring back the Cerberus Mon. And then Minerva Mon activates because you have two or less cards. The opponent has two or less cards on the field. So you bring back this with Minerva Mon's effect. This activates because Minerva Mon doesn't block this on play. So then you use the Werewolf to pop the Cerberus to gain nine memory. Now, if you can't tell me that's not broken, you cannot say that. You can't. And there are turns where I've done that like three times in one turn, and I won the game. That's how you win with this deck. It's just a constant loop. It's a loop. It is a loop. Because you're always gaining memory to do it. Um, and that's it. And once you do the first one, like you can swing if you want, and then you can evolve into another Minerva for three. And then you can play another Revive from the Darkness and bring this back and then bring this back. And then you gain another nine. So once you do it once, you have all the memory in the world to do it as many times as you want. That's why we play four copies of this card. This card's incredibly degenerate in this deck, thanks to what Minerva Mon does, and thanks to how the Cerberus package interacts. Uh, you have to play four, you have to see it. It's a little clunky at the start of the game, sure, but you need it, and yes, that's it. Um, to finish off our deck, we're playing seven options, seven more options. We're playing four Jack Raids. Um, Jack Raid in security is really good this format, which is why I'm playing four of it. Uh, it also helps you with your looping. It helps you with your memory so that you can make plays like this. And the final three cards are just three Calling from the Darkness. I didn't have room for four, nor did I have room for any other cheap purple option. But the Calling from the Darknesses give you another way to like proc Minerva Mon if you need to. Also gives you a way to proc your stacks, your Eismon scatter modes, and lets you recycle resources. Let's you get back Psychomons, Gauzymons, and Minerva Mons and Death Axmon. Those are the main targets you get with the Calling from the Darkness. And um, it's just, it's broken in this deck. It's so good. If you blow up, by the way, if you pay for one and then you have an Analog Youth and you're, the thing you pop is like a Cerberus Mon with a stack, it's basically a free calling. It, it, it's kind of absurd. I think most people know that, but just in case. That's it for the deck profile. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This deck is undefeated so far, and I'm loving it. I, uh, you, If you can play this deck perfectly, you will probably win a giant tournament in BT10, barring any unfortunate bricks or just multiple floodgates and all of that. Have a wonderful day. Bye.